I'm here with Peter Taft, the General Secretary of the Socialist Party. A few days ago the party's National Committee met uh, and the main topic of discussion was the uh, recent uh, elections and what they mean for, what the results mean for working class people. Um, so what were the, the main conclusions arising from that? Well, the, our National Committee met and had a full discussion on the situation in Britain arising from the election. And our conclusions were Number one, it was a big defeat for the Liberal Democrats, who were, have gone from being a radical protest party and now losing their base in the industrial areas, in the urban areas. They've uh, lost in the north, in Scotland and Wales and so on, and even in the south. They're down to about 15% in the opinion polls, but because of that, the, the present coalition government is not in a fit state to fight the general election because the Liberal Democrats would be decimated, maybe reduced to a rump, and that would not allow this government to go ahead with its program. So it's unlikely that a general election will be held immediately. You can't rule it out. And that means the government's still in power and there's going to be a massive attack on the living standards of working class people. Well, many people are saying that regardless of who wins the next general election or who won the last council election, that these cuts are going to happen anyway, that they're inevitable, they need to happen. So do you think that these cuts can actually be stopped? They can be stopped. There's many precedents in history for so-called strong governments, like Margaret Thatcher, who we defeated, that was when we were the militants and now the Socialist Party, and we were the main force in the anti-poll tax unions. We organized 18 million people and we stopped a savage attack on living standards of working class people. Same in Liverpool between 1983 and 1987. There's no doubt about it in Britain. There is overwhelming opposition to this cut, these cuts. When you get splits of the character that we have in the government, where we read in the newspapers that one Tory said, we must stab the Liberal Democrats in the eyes before they stab us in the back. I know that only yesterday, in the 1922 backbench committee in Parliament of the MPs, one, one Tory MP was alleged to have said, in defence of Andrew Lansley, the present health minister, in defending his terrible attack on the NHS, they actually described the Liberal Democrats, and I'm using their language, not mine, as those yellow bastards. I mean, that's not exactly an indication of amity and peace between the partners in the coalition. Uh, many commentators are saying that you know th there's an economic crisis on, that these cuts need to be made. The only way we're going to restore profitability to the capitalist system is by ultimately making working class people suffer with their jobs, with their living standards. Do you think that the present cuts programme is uh, succeeding in doing that? Do you think that it will uh, restore profitability to the, to the capitalist system? Well, you've, you've raised a very important question there. Why are the cuts taking place? These are not dropped from the heavens. It's a product of the crisis of capitalism, not just in Britain, but internationally. Look what's happening with Greece, with Portugal, Spain and so on at the present time. Britain's only a little bit down the line at the moment. But the reason for the deficit, the 81 billion pounds that Osborne intends to cut over four years, that's not because of you and me, of working class people, that's because of the crisis of this system. As a result of the devastating crisis of the last three years, where the IMF has said that this system lost in one year, in the year 2009, something like 50 trillion dollars that's the equivalent of the total production of goods and services in any one year. That's a terrible, annihilating condemnation of capitalism. And what is profit? Profit comes from working class people's labour. It's the unpaid labour, in the words of Karl Marx. And the only way they can restore this profitability is by cutting the living standards of the working class. But quite frankly, there's enough profits at the present time for big business. They're drowning in profits, what they call liquidity. The problem with the system is there's no profitable outlet for capitalism at the present time. That's the, why we had this orgy of financialization under capitalism in the last 20, 30 years. So the cuts, from the point of view of only working people, are not necessary. And by the way, out of the last 250 years, in 200 of those years, the deficit has been bigger than we have at the present time. Really, the government is using this crisis in order to attack working people and give a bonus to the benefit of big business which backs this government to the hills. 
Okay, well, if these cuts, as you say, if they can be stopped, if they're, you know, if they're not working in terms of restoring probability to the system, etc. I mean, what what are the next steps for working people who are being made to pay for the crisis? We've already seen the uh, magnificent demonstration on March the 26th. So, what is the next movement, for, uh, the next move for working class people for the trade union movement? Well, as you say, March the 26th was one of the biggest demonstrations of specifically working class people in the history of this country and it shook the government and it's had a ripple effect and it's still having a ripple effect because it's given confidence to those in the public sector and the private sector that we can act to defeat this government as I've said we have many historical precedents for this these cuts are going to affect working people the likes of which you've not seen for 70 80 years look at the terrible position of the disabled and the sick. There was a tremendous demonstration only a week ago in central uh, London where 5,000 of the most unfortunate citizens in this society were compelled to come to London, pay out hundreds of uh, pounds. Behind them is probably another hundred for each individual, another hundred people. And behind them is the mass of working people in Britain. And yet of the 81 billion pounds that Osborne is going to take out of the economy in the next four years, 10% of that, 9 billion, will be inflicted on the sick, the disabled. The same with the NHS. Above all, the attack on public sector pensions has provoked a storm. I've just come back from the conference of the Civil Service Union, the PCS. At that particular conference, the delegates overwhelmingly voted for action. Only two votes abstained or voted against. We haven't had this situation in the trade union movement for decades and that's just a little indication. The same with the teachers, the same with other sections of the public sector and on June the 30th the first payment of account of the storm that's coming will be when the public sector workers come out hopefully with a million workers coming out on strike on June the 30th. Just the start of what we will see of a bigger movement in the autumn. OK, well, once we, you know, once that movement has begun to build, once the momentum's going, what, what do we actually put forward? What is the alternative to the cuts programme of the condemned government? Certainly Labour aren't putting forward any kind of alternative. So what programme will we be proposing for that movement? Well, that's right. But let's be clear, first of all, the, the most important noise, if you like, on the political landscape at the moment is the noise of screeching rubber of the U-turns that this government has already done on the forestries, on the question of allotments. It doesn't, it's not a big issue, but they've, they've retreated on that. Now the Financial Times is advising Cameron to drop Lansley's NHS bill. And they're making noises that they're listening. There's a pause. But frankly, we cannot trust them. Only powerful, organised, working class action it will force this government to step back. And that's what the, the, the trade union movement is demanding. First of all, of public sector workers, with those who are in the private sector affected as well, on pensions. But that should be a step towards a 24-hour general strike, not a parade. Not as some of the trade union leaders think. We all stop work and we go home or we go out and have a picnic. But for meetings to discuss the character of the crisis and to come forward, as you've correctly said, with an alternative. What is that alternative? Number one, the council should not implement these cuts, especially if they're supposed to be so-called Labour. They should be, be prepared to do what Liverpool did in 83-87 with a needs budget and mobilise working people to defeat the government's proposals. That's number one. Number two, it should be uh, organised on a, on a regional and a national scale and hopefully on uh, June the 30th, we will have demonstrations in every city, central London demonstration, where other, other workers can join in. But what's the alternative? The Osborne and Cameron are saying there's no alternative to their proposals. We say there is an alternative. Tax the rich, who are escaping uh, tax at the present time. That's a good step. The PCS has demanded that. How are you going to implement that? By just saying that the government should do it? They'll find a thousand and one ways around this. The only way to stop them is to nationalise the banks, but not in the manner of Northern Rock that was semi-nationalised without any control, but with real workers' control and, and participation and management, and then we could begin to, to control the levers of power in Britain. But even that is only a step towards taking over the commanding heights of the economy. Capitalism 
not on the pages of Das Kapital, Karl Marx's famous book describing the maladies of capitalism, but in the living reality of the deterioration of working class people's living standards in Britain, in Greece, in Portugal, in Spain, in Europe, and as a whole, capitalism has been shown to fail. We stand for a new society, a society based upon production not for profit, but for social need, and that's socialism. It's a very simple idea, not the caricature we had in the Soviet Union of a bureaucratic regime, but of a democratic socialist society in which we control the means of production, distribution and exchange, and then rather than the counter-reforms that are being carried through, we can carry through real reforms that will solve unemployment, deprivation, all the horrors of capitalism that we see at the moment, but will get worse unless the labor movement acts.